What's up YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about IT certifications and if they're really worth it or not. Now, if you go look at most IT job postings, you're going to see certifications listed on there and they're really required for almost any field. Like if you're looking to get into help desk, you most likely need to get an A plus certification. If you're looking to get in networking, maybe a network plus, maybe a CCNA, something like that. Cybersecurity, if you're looking for a SOC analyst, maybe it's a Security Plus or a CYSA Plus, something along those lines. But do you actually need to do that? And so if you're a first time viewer of this channel, what makes me an expert on this? Well, I happen to be the CEO of a certification company. So I kind of want to share my opinions, which might not be what you think they are. As always, if you like the video, please do hit the like button. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost at a million subscribers, which is really cool. And we're going to take a really quick ad break from our sponsor, and we'll be right back to discuss this topic. If you watch our channel, that probably means that you care about security. If you're a developer using open source libraries or even writing code from scratch, it's important to make sure that your code is secure. And that's where Sneak comes in. Sneak integrates into your existing tools, your IDEs, CLI, repos, and scans your code as you write it in real time. I'm not kidding. Watch this. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code with the Sneak Security Extension enabled. And I'm writing this code in Python. I am writing code to log into a SQL database. And oh no, I can see that I'm getting some errors in here. So if I hover over this error, it says I have a SQL injection because unsanitized input exists. And if I come over here and actually click on this, I can show the suggestion from Sneak, which says that, yeah, it's unsanitized, but also here's some examples of how to fix this. You can click through, there's three here. It tells us exactly what we need to do, giving us real time examples. And we can even learn more about the vulnerability if we want to. It's really great. Let's see what happens when I fix this code. And once we do fix this, all I have to do is hit save and it will rescan my file. And just so you can see the fix, I came in here and added some parameterized queries. And now we are all good to go. We have saved it. And look, I've got no errors down here, no errors in my file. Now I'm not going to have SQL injection in my code. And that is the power of Sneak. So make sure your project remains secure from the start. You could try Sneak today with my code at sneak.co forward slash the cyber mentor. So as mentioned previously, I am the CEO of a certification company called PCM Security. The unique thing about TCM security is that we are also a consultancy and we're pretty active on the consulting side. Not a lot of training companies are also consultancies. So what I actually get to see is a lens from both sides. I get to see the students that we're training and educating and how they're doing in the field. And then I also get to see the applicants that apply to our jobs for cybersecurity and see what they look like on an average profile. So what you're doing when you are going out there and you're putting your resume out in front of people is you are putting a piece of paper down and you are expecting to be evaluated based on that piece of paper. So yes, in the world of jobs, certifications are incredibly helpful when it comes to having something on a piece of paper to help you stand out. The more certifications you have, maybe the better off you're going to be. And I am a believer that certifications can indeed replace a college degree. IT is a new field in general. We're 20, 30 years old now. OK, old heads will tell you it's been going on for a lot longer than that. And that's true. But the idea of cybersecurity especially is very, very new. So we have college programs out there for IT and for cyber. And truthfully, not all of them are that great. A lot of employers realize that a lot of people still to this day have come up through backgrounds that don't require a degree. And a lot of people have come through backgrounds that have not needed to actually go out and get a certification. So this is me telling you before I tell you my advice that no, you do not need a certification to be successful in this field. I know plenty of people that don't have any and they've been fine. There are many different reasons to go out there and get a certification. Some of them are check the box, right? You're just going, getting a certification. I've done plenty of those. I've gone out and got XYZ certification to be more qualified for a role but it doesn't mean that I would have been eliminated per se from that position. Now, most jobs are looking for a unicorn candidate. You are not going to meet all the requirements of a job posting. I would have never been hired for any of the jobs I worked for if they actually required everything that was listed on a job posting. For example, my first help desk job, it wanted an A plus certification. I didn't have one. I actually did not have a certification before getting into IT. I'm living proof that you actually don't need certifications, but there are other skills that you will need. 
Same thing with degrees, right? The average candidate that we see come through for TCM security has a bachelor's degree at a minimum. They have multiple certifications. And so now we're comparing people that look very similar on a sheet of paper. And so what do you need to do? Well, if you don't have a degree, maybe you get more certifications. Or if you have a degree, maybe you don't need a certification, but you can supplement that with other things. For example, soft skills go a long way. And just showing interest in a field goes a long way. If you have a blog, if you have a YouTube channel, if you go out to events, like if you go volunteer at a local B-Sides or a security conference or IT conference, that helps. If you have a home lab, just something that you built, hey, that really, really looks good on a resume. If you're doing training and education that doesn't actually lead to certifications, put that on your resume as well. Just show that you're passionate about the field and that you have interest and that you actually want to break in. That goes a long way. I'm not saying one thing is better than the other, but collection of these skills really do help. So if we're evaluating a candidate and we see a lot of soft skills there, but maybe they don't have some of the technical certifications or maybe they're missing a degree, we don't just throw them into the no pile. We actually like that quite a bit. And so one of the best things that you can do, and I do consider this a soft skill, by the way, with soft skills, I, I think we have a problem as an industry where we are teaching so much on the technical side, but we're not teaching people all the other intangibles, like how to write an email, how to communicate. One of the cool things about when I went through business school was that they actually taught us how do you eat dinner? Where does your napkin go? And I wish that we would get some of those things in a technical program, right? If you're going through a technical program, they should be teaching you how to write an email or how to communicate professionally, how to engage at certain events and those kinds of things. I think soft skills go a long way. One of the best things that you can do for your career, better than any certification, better than any degree at all is networking. If you're going and putting yourself out there, and this does not mean physically going out there, you don't have to do that, okay? I realize that a lot of us in the IT field are introverted. I am severely introverted. I am a social anxiety type person, and I do really well in one-on-one -on -one situations, but if I get put into large crowds or large groups, I kind of just tuck into my little turtle shell, right? So I feel like a lot of people in IT are like that. On average, your IT individual is likely more introverted than not. And so how do we go and put ourselves out there when we're maybe afraid to do so? Well, it doesn't have to be public events, but public events do help. However, if you go out there and you're in part of a community, if you're part of like a Discord, or even if you're on LinkedIn, that does go a long way. We've had videos in the past where we've talked about this, about just being a good person and having that karma and putting yourself out there. And I really think you should go watch that because it goes in a lot more detail than I'm gonna go into now. But if you're putting yourself out there and you're networking, it's going to take you so much further than a degree or a certification or anything else. If you're just being a good person and you're actually being a helpful individual, there's lots of people that are out there watching you as you plant these seeds and you don't know where those seeds are going to go. For me, I had a lot of job opportunities early on in my career because I was just doing YouTube. I wasn't doing anything else. Sure, I was collecting certifications, but people didn't know about those certifications. People knew about me and that I was giving back to the community and that I was teaching people how to get into IT and cybersecurity. And I had a lot of good job opportunities come my way. And so again, it's nothing that you have to do to reinvent the wheel. When I say, hey, go create a blog, create a blog about your journey or your experiences. If you're doing something like try hack me or hack the box or whatever it might be, and you're working through some machines, do a write-up. Who cares if somebody else has done the write-up? There could be 10 or 20 of them. Do your own write-up. You're not doing this necessarily for viewers. You're just doing this for yourself. And honestly, if you're putting your work out there, it helps you retain the information a lot better, especially if you're attempting to teach it. And it makes for a good repository to go back and look at later on. I still, to this day, if I'm participating in like a CTF or I'm going back and I'm doing a pen test, I am actually looking through a lot of my notes or videos or blogs because of that information that is still out there and these little tidbits of advice. So you can create your own personal repository that you put out there on the web and it actually generates some interest for you and shows your passion for the field. And that's just one example. YouTube's another example, GitHub, writing code, putting code out there, writing tools, that really shows interest as well. And so that's really my challenge to you. Do you need an IT certification to break into this field? No, but if you're not going to do that, then you need to supplement elsewhere. It could be with blogs, it could be with home labs, it should absolutely be with networking and giving back and just answering questions and trying to be a good person overall. 
put yourself out there on LinkedIn. Again, I'll drop some links in the description below for some of the videos I'm referring to and other things. And I'll even drop some links in the description below for like communities, right? We, we have a blog that says how to be a hacker in X year. And we update this every year. We've got another one coming out in the next month or so. And we put all the communities that we really like out there. And so you don't have to just come to ours. There's plenty of communities where you can go network with other people in the field that you're interested in. So just put yourself out there and really try to think about how you're going to be different on a piece of paper than somebody else. If it's not through certifications, that's perfectly fine. A lot of times we're priced out of certifications, especially if an employer's not sponsoring them, it makes it really difficult. So, hey, if you can't do a certification, that's okay. Just think about other things that you can do to maybe get yourself across the finish line. And so that is my spiel for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Again, if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Would love to have you here. Anyway, until next time, my name is Heath Adams, AKA The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.